Welcome back, everybody. Another episode of D-Town TV, the free show for DSLR shooters. I'm RC, and I'm here with Mr. Larry Becker. Hey, guys. Now, uh, what do you have for us today? Well, a, a I, I, did this, I did this on cheap shots. <coughs> it's just a real quick setup for, instead of a, a light tent, you know, a lot of people will spend money and get a big light tent. This is a real cheap shots answer to that kind of thing. This is the center of a large uh, five-in-one reflector. It's just a, a diffuser scrim. And I set up on a TV tray with a piece of white poster board. You take this outside. You don't need to worry about your flashes or anything like that. Don't need to worry about sunny or cloudy day. And you can take product shots. This kind of light stand holds it up for you and you set up on a tripod out here and take pictures. Now that was the cheap shot part, but this is the important part that I wanted to talk about today. If you have a product underneath this setup that has specific reflections, and I've got a picture of a spoon to show you, when you have those kinds of things and you want to add characteristics to the reflections, take something like a stripe of tape and you just lay it on the top and it adds just that extra thing to the light that's coming through to your product and it adds texture to it. So if, if you've got a picture of a spoon and it just ha has a clear bowl and nothing to it, that's one kind of picture. But you can try with strips of cardboard or, or strips of black gaffer's tape like I have, um, multiple different things to cast different shadows and give your product shot a different kind of texture. Nice. So that's it today, guys. Nice, awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, I wanted to talk about something just a little quickly. Yeah. Um, last couple of shows and on Google Plus and all that stuff and on Twitter, obviously before we do anything, if you want to be able to follow anything that we do on Twitter, make sure you go to Becker Biz. Yep. You can also about follow RC. us at twitter.com forward slash about RC. And Scott had mentioned it and we talked about stealth shooting in HDR. Yeah. Last week I processed that picture on how to be able to make the HDR for the Columbia restaurant. This is what I do. This is my stealth thing. I usually carry my camera, I'll go somewhere, I'll carry my camera and I carry this with me. Because this is a tabletop tripod, a Manfrotto 3009. I'll take this tripod and I'll screw this on top of my actual camera. And as I'm doing stuff, I'll set it down and I'll take whatever shot it is that I'm taking, in this case, let's say a restaurant or a location. Mm -hmm. Then I'm not looking for the perfect shot. I'll set this to 800, 1600. Matter of fact, that other one was at 2200 ISO. I'm not looking for a perfect shot. I'm looking for a concept shot, enough for me to be able to go home, HDR, tone map, dress it up nice, and then what I do is I print it on really, really nice paper and I go back to the facility. Those shots I call door openers. I'll take that back to the facility. Rather than walking into a restaurant and going, hey, I'm a really good photographer. Look what, you know, I'm, give me a chance to be able to shoot this place. Or going, I'm a really good photographer. Here's a whole bunch of pictures of other places that kind of sort of look like that. Right. I walk in with their place. I go, look, this is a shot that I did with just 60 seconds worth of time. Now, can you give me 10 minutes? And more often than not, anybody who sees that, any manager, anybody that takes a look at that, they go, yes, I want this. Sure. I want bigger this. I want more access to this. And being able to do that for just a couple of seconds will get you a lot of access to a lot of places. So That's a stealth great tripod, idea. go home and process it. Go back to the scene of the crime. You'll be surprised as to how many shots you get. Very cool. People love to see their own stuff. People mm -hmm. love to see... That's, that's a great idea. So Marcy. let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're going to go ahead and we're going to have the man himself, Mr. Scott Kelby, talking to us about some stuff. Hi, guys. Welcome at Kelby Training. I'm Frank Doroff, and today we're going to freeze motion. This is my model. Hi, Dallas. Hi. And uh, let's make a jump. One, two, three. And if you want to know how to freeze action, you really have to watch this class. And we're not only freezing models like Dallas. No, we're going out to a BMX track. Welcome back to D-Town TV, the free show for DSLR shooters. Now remember, all of this information is brought to you by kellytraining.com. If you want to be able to find out how to be able to use photography, Photoshop, all things related to this art, 
make sure you check out the kellytraining.com. Now, we've got a cheap shot from you yep. talking about a little camera flash. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Here at Cheap Shots, we really care about the environment. Today, I want to talk to you about recycling, and in particular, recycling cardboard items. Actually, that's not what I'm talking to you about at all. I want to talk to you about camouflage, hiding your camera in plain sight. You know, something like this, this apparent recycling box, nobody's going to break into your car if they see this kind of thing sitting in your car, and they won't come after your camera. So. Uh, what I have is a couple of ideas today on how to hide your gear in plain sight. It's an obvious thing to carry uh, a jacket or a towel or something like that. Have that in your car all the time. And if you ever just put your camera in your car, cover it up with something, a, a jacket or a towel. But other things that could work to hold more gear, lighting gear and things like that, how about a laundry basket? And then put a, a couple of towels on top of that. Something that people just don't think they're going to break into a car and steal laundry. Um, it's a good way to hide your camera gear. So make sure that you hide your gear or have some kind of plan for hiding it. One last one, and I love this tip. You know, I, I remember when uh, I saw an episode of D-Town when Matt and Scott were talking about camera bags and hiding the camera bag logos. Well, how about, and I've seen this done really well, put your camera gear in a diaper bag. I know it sounds terrible, but put all your stuff in a diaper bag or just wrap your diaper bag around a regular camera bag. It's a really easy way to get people to not look at your camera gear as potential theft material. That's it for Cheap Shots this week. We'll see you next time. Well, I sure hope that helps some of you keep your gear safe, but look who's here. <laughs> look at this. Wow. This is so odd to be on the detail <laughs> oh set. Oh my God. <laughs> just beam down all of a sudden. Can you believe it? I can't believe it. Scott Kelby, you, you have a tip and everything. This used to be my set, Larry. You may have, <laughs> before you guys kicked me off the show. <laughs> oh, no, wait, hold up a second. Nope, still not in focus, sorry. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> Now, okay. what are you doing it on? What do you got your, what's, what's I've got a thing? tip, so uh, mine is on uh, creating shadows for composites. So this is where you shoot someone on a, a light gray background. Right. You composite them off the background, and you put them on a new background. And uh, one of the key things, I think, is our, our shadows. So uh, the shot that we did, I lit uh, during a, a live workshop. And it's Nelly, the famous Nelly, right. famous Nelly from right. D-Town. So it's Nelly. And um, there's no shadows in the shot. So you can, if you can look on screen here, I can show you that it's just uh, background and then Nelly on top. Okay, so we took, the, took her off the gray background, popped her on here. But there's no shadows in here yet. So I'm going to show you how to create multiple shadows. Okay. Uh, there's light coming from both sides of her, which is, I like that on purpose because I never know where the light, I don't know necessarily what background I'm going to drop her on. Right. So I light her from literally 45 degree angles. So one light here, another light here. This one a little softer, this one a little harder. So when I do the shadows, I'll do one shadow softer, one shadow harder. And I'm going to have one of the shadows go across the floor and then climb up the wall. So that's the tip. Nice. May I show you now? Please, please. Thank you. Because right. it already looks like she belongs in that environment. Well, I, I match the color, which is one of the things I teach on my tours, on how to match the color of her to the background. So the okay. first thing is lighting it so you can stick it in a different background. Secondly is, is how to match the color and all. But we're going to move right past that onto shadows. So you duplicate the layer. or just press Command-J on Mac or Control-J on PC to duplicate the layer. Then you're going to fill the image of her with black, this duplicate layer. Uh, shift Option Delete on Mac, Shift Alt Backspace on PC. Now, so we'll go with a really, really soft shadow first. I'm just gonna take this and drag it to the left and we're gonna blur it to death. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Huge, no, that's not huge. That's, that's huge, 75-ish pixel blur. And then we're gonna move it behind her because shadows seem to work better back there. <laughs> and then I'm going to lower the opacity here quite a bit to where it's just kind of barely there. But it's already, look, it's already, it's already making a difference. Yeah, it does. In fact, I could probably go a little lower with that one. Okay, so then the second shadow, duplicate the layer, fill it with black, same thing. Mm -hmm. But this time I'm gonna do this. We're gonna move to the other side because we have two light sources here. And what I wanna do is I wanna make it hit the floor and aim up. So we're gonna go to free transform. I'm going to go right to the center point. I'm gonna hold the command key and kind of bend it over like that. So the shadow's actually kind of hitting the floor. Then what you do is you get the rectangular marquee tool here in Photoshop, mm -hmm. and we're going to select everything from the floor up, and we're going to actually cut it. We're going to cut it off. So Shift Command J cuts it from the layer it's on and puts it on its own separate layer, so you can see what we have is just that. 
So the some of it on the floor, some of it on the wall. Mm -hmm. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to take this and send it back up the wall. So we're just using the sure. same keyboard shortcut command and grab the top, the top one. So it's kind of there. Of course, it would look better behind uh -huh. her. Let's just pull her all the way to the front there. All right. Then what we'll do is I'll make this one not quite as soft. So we'll go Gaussian blur. You blur her. Yeah. I wouldn't go. I wouldn't go. Don't make a Fuji joke. I know you want to. <laughs> I know you want to. And then uh, maybe something in there, 25. So, you know, a third of what you did on the other one. So 25 pixels ish. And then lower that opacity a bit. And then go to the bottom and run the exact same blur and lower it to the same amount of opacity. I lowered this to 48. You would lower this to 48. So it kind of is heading back there. I think both of them are actually a little bright. Let's go to like maybe 30% on both of them. There we go. And I'll just show you the difference that having all these shadows in there makes. So look, it is multiple shadows. And you can decide if the whole bunch is, is too bright or anything. But anyway, and lastly, if you did, if you actually did want the the Fuji one X100 effect, you go filter, blur on her layer, and put maybe a half pixel Gaussian blur, now maybe a full pixel. So she just looks a little out of focus. Just kidding. Totally <laughs> kidding. Skip that last part. Just kidding, Fuji owners. It's awesome. <laughs> But see, and the, the cool part about this is just that at the end of the day, like you're lighting and you're doing this kind of stuff, but there's always a certain amount of post-processing. And I think that that's like at the end of the day, you know, when you're working with a specific photography technique, a lot of the time people are like, oh, well, you know, I'll just light it and I'll do this and I'll do that. But, you know, you can't discount post. Post is something that you really, really need to have oh, yeah. when you're working with an image. And you know what else, too? Everybody does it. I mean, uh, nobody just takes a photo out of the camera. You know, even the, some of the best photographers, you name the best photographers, the most popular photographers out there, they're either doing the post-its themselves or they hand the post off to an assistant or a retoucher because everybody does post today. How could you compete today in the commercial space and just take it right out of the camera because all of your competitors are post-processing? So you may as well know it. So you may as well know it. That is, a, that is a great tip. And the, uh, the thing is that it just sells it so much more. Yeah, I mean, if the shadows make a huge, well, it adds the depth and things that would be missing otherwise. It's very cool. Mr. Scott Kelby. Thank you, Larry. Joined us again yeah. on D-Town. Thank you very much. Thank you. I can see the comments going up already. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Mama always said, you got to preserve the present for those in the future. I think that's what my Romance Landscape series was all about. I shot for six days, 12 hours, and 34 minutes straight. I'm pretty tired. Think I'll go home now. Hey everybody, welcome back. You know, we're gonna wrap up like we always do. Now this is the last show of the season, so that's right. That's make right. sure that you uh, check in with me on Cheap Shots on my blog, because I'll be posting regularly. I'm gonna try and do a video a week, just so you don't go into too much withdrawal during our down season. Mm -hmm. But 
Uh, I wanted to give you a great photographer to look at. Her name is Shelly Cryan. I was doing a uh, business article for the latest issue of Photoshop User Magazine, and Shelly was one of the sports shooters I interviewed, and she's just got some really great stuff. She's a stringer for some local media, and she does freelance work, and I interviewed a lot of people, and hers was just among the top of the sports shooters that I had a chance to see, local sports shooters around the country. So check out ShellyCryan.com. Very cool stuff. Nice. Now, make sure you do this. Go to the Detown TV website. In the comments for this, what I want you to do is I want you to tell us what you want to be able to see next season on Detown TV. We're going to give you a big prize. Why don't we start off with, for example, a pass to Photoshop World. Photoshop World, September 7th through 9th at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada. Mm -hmm. You will go at that Photoshop World with this. Matt's brand new book, and you know what? He knocked it out of the park on this book. Photo composite, Photoshop Compositing Secrets. I have not seen a person that hasn't gone through the book and hasn't gone, yes, this is exactly what I want to be able to do. Awesome. The industry is doing a lot of Photoshop compositing. If you want to be able to see the Bible for it, this one right here. So we're going to give you that. And on top of that, I'm going to throw in a copy of the On One Software Suite. So you're going to get the On One Software Suite, this book, Larry's Magazine, <laughs> he's going to sign, and a Pass the Photoshop World. And all you need to do is go to the Detown TV website and leave a comment. Tell us what you want to be able to see next season. If you want, make sure that you stop in at twitter.com forward slash about RC. Say hi. Make sure you stop by twitter.com forward slash Becker Biz. Say hello. Guys, thank you so much for checking out the it's season. It's been a great season. It's been a great season. We really, really appreciate it. The best thing that you can do to be able to help us is tell your friends. If you love this stuff and you like learning as much as we like teaching, make sure you let them know. On behalf of myself, RC. Larry Becker, four weeks away. We'll see you again. Take care. Bye, everybody.